Welcome back, everybody. Derek Sue, your East Oakland advocate. Well, the big headlines right now here in the Bay Area is uh, the ownership uh, turning in uh, their property in San Francisco. We're talking about the Westfield Mall. This is a multi-million dollar mall in the heart of San Francisco's business district. And its owners said it can't turn a profit. And one of the anchor stores that was part of the Westfield Mall was Nordstrom's. And when a, a large uh, organization, a large company occupies a large space like Nordstrom's and they pull out, that hurts the mall. And everybody who else who is in the mall and for the longest time, since uh, at least the year 2000, when we rolled into the year 2000, we already had way too many shopping malls. And, and just to give you an example, if you were to uh, draw a one-hour circle and a two-hour circle around from, from the center of where you are, and you work a, a one-hour ring outside of where you live and your that's your driving zone typically here in the in uh, oakland from oakland i i did this uh i drew a ring uh one hour out and then i drew a ring two hours out so two hours takes me all the way from oakland out to uh the northern uh and near placerville uh, north of Sacramento, and in that in the uh, two hour span, two hour uh, driving range, did you know? Even going south or east, we can't go west here in Oakland because all we have is San Francisco. Uh, but there are typically, on average, inside a one hour ring, one hundred thirty five shopping malls on average 135 shopping malls on average and that's typical uh here in the bay area and i and that would be also typical throughout california if you uh drew a one hour circle or a two hour circle around the big cities of california you would be amazed at how much uh how oversaturated uh we are with shopping malls and i've been saying since the year 2000 that there's too many shopping malls because right here in oakland while we don't have many shopping it, in fact near me i had already counted five five shopping malls in less than a mile one mile of me five and so that's significant that's a significant number because uh you know that in a lot of these shopping malls, there's uh, repetition and you see the same uh, uh, companies like McDonald's or Wendy's uh, or other uh, shopping outlets. You see them common, very common in there. And, and while that, that's good for uh, business owners, uh, it's not so good for the residents because there, there comes a, a point where uh, life is now being centered around shopping, and that's not what life should be centered around. Life should be centered around your family, recreation, and uh, seeking your happiness, what makes you happy, and, and not uh, being concerned about shopping malls. And, and I, I bring this up because uh, a lot of people are, are saying, wow, that's really horrible, that's really horrible. Actually, no we need a reduction in the shopping malls. In fact, uh, shopping malls haven't been around all that long. Is uh, If you think about it, the concept was originally uh, made in 1952. And that concept was, uh, the mall concept was first uh, introduced in Ed, Ed, Edina, Edina, Minnesota, in 1952 and 
the very first mall constructed and it was in an enclosed mall of and it was uh, 1956 and the mall was called Southdale Mall in Minnesota in Edina Minnesota and, and so things they haven't been around a long time in fact growing up uh, the Eastmont Mall was a real close by and, and a great concept but the thing it, that it did was it hurt the local businesses the local businesses suffered because that big box uh, mall brought in lower prices and uh, more variety all in a very concentrated space and, and so that was the the concept you know bringing a, a whole lot of uh, businesses and big businesses before you had your downtown districts and so uh, here in Oakland you would venture out of your home on Saturday go downtown Oakland and we had back then HC Capwells, Liberty House, Smith's uh, and, and a whole lot of other uh, major uh, stores downtown. I Magnum comes to mind, Sears comes to mind, Woolworths comes to mind. So there were a lot of stores and, and it was a family event to go down to go into downtown Oakland. And, and not only did you do your shopping there, but you also ate lunch and Many times you would uh, find entertainment. The Fox Theater was down there. Uh, and so these became hubs of uh, the community and, and where people got to meet and uh, co-mingle and, and entertain. And many other parts of Oakland just became a smaller neighborhood uh, like Ace Hardware's, uh, your smaller food uh uh, locations like quarter pound burgers was was a uh, regular place that that uh, my mother loved to go to and ace hardware was a place that i regularly went to to get uh, whatever things i needed i didn't have a home depot back then there was no lulls so you either went to the lumber yards which like economy lumber uh, i i went to regularly and was uh, part of my supply chain uh, I didn't have a uh, Home Depot. I didn't have a Lowell's back then. In fact, I hated those once they came into existence. While their prices were great, their services sucked. And, and their knowledge of anything was horrible and horrendous. And, and it still applies today because you have some of the most dumb people working at Home Depot. And, and I encounter them on a regular basis when I go there. And... and you know, that's why I despise going to Home Depot. I would rather spend more money at my local hardware store than I would uh, save money. I, I don't care about saving the few pennies that uh, Home Depot and Lowell's uh, offers. And, and they're usually an anchor. They're a, an anchor for more malls. And, and so there, <laughs> there's, in time, t really tough times, these malls start struggling. That was one of the first things that they, they did notice. Uh, but also, uh, they, they were also an area of survival because um, it, the malls became a, a, a place for, when I was a youngster, we were mall rats. Uh, I wasn't so much because you know, I didn't have friends to go hang out at the mall and, and do whatever. But uh, during the 80s, shopping malls you know, were, were the hubs for your teenagers to go hang out because they had the movie theaters, they had uh, entertainment uh, arcades and, and places like that in, in the mall back then. They don't have those anymore. Uh, some malls do have a theater, but theaters are struggling right now. As uh, right now, um, I can't think of, uh, there's no theater in Oakland that is associated with a mall uh, currently, uh, we have to go out to Emeryville or San Leandro to go see a movie um, currently. And, and and so, and those are situated in malls. And, you know, Emery, Emeryville, that would be the Bay Street uh, Mall, the shopping center. And then for San Leandro, that would be uh, the uh, Bayfair Mall, which 
partially sold half of its property uh, to another uh, investor, and they're going to be change making major changes to the Bayfair Mall. In fact, uh, a lot of the Bayfair Mall is going to be going away. Here in Oakland, uh, one of the things that you may or may not be aware of, the Eastmont Mall uh, was vacated uh, in 2022 uh, of social services. Alameda County Social Services moved out of there. And the reason why they moved out of there is because the Eastmont Mall is going to become the new Oakland Police Department. And so this is part of the changeover right now. There's going to be um, a lot of changing going on over there because the uh, current uh, um, police station is not earthquake safe. And so they have to uh, leave that uh, building and move all the services, all the departments. And since the Eastmont Mall was the newest uh, uh, space with enough uh, uh, volume uh, of square footage for the Oakland Police Department, uh, it w it made sense because that's that's a mall that is dead and and barely surviving. It it's it's on life support. It's been on life support for a long time. That's because of uh, the city not investing in East Oakland. But uh, it it's it's sad. Uh, there's too many malls. Uh, back in the day, uh, if you ventured out, you had to uh, plan your trip. Uh, you plan your entertainment and, and malls. There's too many, uh, too, way too many malls. And, and every year I, I, I listened after 2000 of, of another mall popping up here in the Bay area and, and they, they promote it. And then, uh, the, the thing was that, that really irked me was when the holidays come and they talk about black Friday on, on November and they talk about the shopping and, uh, for a number of years, yes, the malls were very, very successful, and dollar sales were up, 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 and kept climbing, and, and there were huge crowds at these malls, and that's the only time that, that they're really crowded anymore is during the holidays, <sighs> but with that crowd comes a lot of congestion, comes uh, arguments, comes crime, uh, a lot of a lot of this, we didn't have that before. And now that we have such an oversaturation of shopping malls throughout our country, uh, they are now hubs of crime. You know, they're, what can I say? It's convenient because you have a whole lot of people, a whole lot of targets and victims, possible victims right there at the mall. And there's no police services. Uh, you have a security guard maybe riding around in there, but they're not going to do anything. They're just going to watch and report, as they say. So they're not going to come to your help. And so uh, I see malls as uh, a negative these days. They're not a positive. None of them are positive. Uh, then the, the biggest disappointment that I ever saw was the Great Mall in Minnesota, the biggest mall in, in America. Uh, that stretch of miles. And, and so we have too many, literally, we have too many. And uh, that's why people are always broke because they're expecting you to spend your money at these malls and they put them minutes away from you, just like McDonald's. And, and it, it's a business strategy and it doesn't work for everybody. It's not working now and we're oversaturated. I, I'm actually wanting to see a lot of these malls go out of business uh, because these uh, speculators, these developers that, that created these malls and these management companies are making millions and millions of dollars and they're not helping the community. And it, they're not benefits to the community any longer. Back in the 50s when it was first uh, conceptualized and brought forward into the 60s and early 70s, that's where it should have stopped because now you're starting to affect the neighborhoods. Uh, you're affecting the business owners of the communities. And not all uh, communities are, are large communities and many communities are dependent upon their small businesses 
uh, for survival. But if you're just a short distance within, say, 45 minutes, because that's what I, I was within an hour when I lived back east. I lived in a very, very rural area. Uh, just to get to town was 20 minutes and to get to major shopping was 45 minutes and I had to drive up to Winston-Salem uh, from my property at that time. And Winston-Salem was 45 minutes away, but that's where all the big shopping was. We had some, uh, we had like four malls right there in Lexington, North Carolina, but the selection was not very good because uh, the draw, uh, they were drawing all the, the uh, big dollars up to Winston-Salem or down to Charlotte because, or down to Concord because of the shopping malls that were available and the, the, the different varieties at, at the time uh, made a difference. And around the lake, there were, while there were a lot of uh, well-to-do people, there were also a lot of people struggling. And, if, and they literally had a set of railroad tracks that divided the town. And if you were on one side of the tracks, you were uh, either people of color or poor or both. If you were on the other side of the tracks, which I was, uh, I was on the wrong side of the tracks in, in to the people there in Lexington because uh, the racism there was, was horrible. Um, and, and so uh, you have, you have malls and the thing about the malls who have large corporations that are, are spending millions of dollars in rent and, and leasing that space, those spaces in the mall to attract you and your dollars, to part you from your dollars. And those big corporations don't care about you. They don't care about the community. And, and they say, well, we, we provide jobs. We, we provide security. No, you don't. You don't provide security. And your jobs are only temporary because, you know, there have been hundreds and thousands of, of businesses that come and go. And, and, I mean, we're talking large retailers that have uh, come in during that period and also have exited, you know, during our, our lifetime. I'm talking about, well, Sears is almost there. They're almost uh, completely gone. Wards, Montgomery Wards. Remember Montgomery Wards? They were huge here in Oakland and a major uh, a warehouse and major employer. And now they're nothing. Uh, Kmart, another one that's uh, just about uh, dead. Uh, Circuit City went belly up a long time ago. Uh, and for those of you, I shopped at a place called Expo. And this was the up, upscale uh, decorations and, for your home of Home Depot. And they lasted about two years, and, and then uh, they went bankrupt, they, that division, and they pulled it out of, uh, off the market. So just because we have some malls and some big uh, stores doesn't mean that they're successful uh, or long-term successful. Uh, I remember uh, bef while we had a lot of malls, we didn't have uh, the saturation like we did back back then. And then uh, we had the uh, during the 80s, Price Club here in the Bay Area started in Hayward. Uh, Price Club, Saul Price uh, was the uh, owner and who started Price Club. And he he did very well. And then he was bought out by Costco. Costco, Kirkland, uh, uh, bought him out uh, in the 90s. Uh, and and uh, I made the change over to uh, Costco. Uh, but then I found better deals at, at Sam's Club. But these are Sam's Club, uh, Costco, are areas where you can save some money. But because you walk in there and there's so much available and so much in your face, um, <laughs> you end up spending a lot more than... You should because I know I did, I, you know, just walking the aisles. And that's the way they, they uh, do that. They, they entice you with, with that warehouse shopping. And that's how you save some money, but at the cost of somebody else's job or what, or their pay. So anyway, 
I say we have too many malls. If we got rid of half of them in America, at least one third, if one third of these malls shut down in America, would it make a difference? No, it won't make any difference because uh, things would go continue on and go. Um, right now, in the, we had a lot of tremendous growth because of the baby boomers. You know, the baby boomers came up uh, and were of age uh, during the 60s, 70s, 80s. 90s here we are in your, our seniors we're some of the wealthiest uh, uh, generation ever and, but yet our kids our future generations are not going to be able to duplicate what we were able to duplicate because of our sheer numbers when I came into the work world uh, there were there was constantly uh, openings uh, for uh, retail workers and that's how I got into retail and then it, it got too dangerous I left the retail uh, I started my own businesses and, and got successful uh, I didn't need a mall I needed a warehouse and so we need more uh, independent uh, uh, minded people entrepreneurs to build businesses uh, we don't need the malls the malls are are a liability and uh, Right now, they should be reconsidered. Uh, those that are closed up and are abandoned right now, because there are many across America, we should be looking at creating affordable housing with those abandoned properties. If we have to tear them down, or uh, my, my thing would be to set up uh, communities in those uh, abandoned malls. Rehab those because they have everything in place, the electricity, the water, uh, sewer, heating, everything's right there. So we need to um, rethink the malls that are abandoned or are struggling and, and consider those for new types of affordable housing as we move forward. We don't need any more malls. We need housing. And with all of the uh, abandoned malls and the struggling malls, we should be creating affordable housing. Not building these high rises, these malls can, can act as a multi-layer uh, uh, community. You have shopping uh, throughout the, a certain amount of uh, the, the mall, and then you have a lot of housing right next door. You have to have transportation close by. Uh, and so uh, buses, uh, metro trains, and uh, services are all important on this. Thanks for joining me today. If you agree with me, let me know how many malls you think we can uh, get rid of, or how many, uh, how many much fewer that we can do with. You know. Thanks for joining me today. We'll be right back.